basically. Oh. <laughs> you know what helps if I hit record. Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and today uh, we're going to talk about storage, some storage issues, and some ways to consider storing your coins. And uh, let's jump right into looking at some of the different things that people will use. I'm going to start with raw coins first. And for raw coins, uh, generally, you're going to have to have some type of an individual holder for the coin. And the most common things you see will be the, uh, the cardboard flips that you have to fold over in half. And then you staple them shut or glue them. I've seen both. They used to have adhesive in some of the ones that you see from the 60s and 70s. Uh, you can staple them shut. Then there's also the different types of uh, plastic sleeves or flips as we call them. And one of the things that uh, you should know is, are you interested in long-term storage or short-term storage? So there's a big difference because if you have the soft vinyl plastic like this, it has a lot of PVC in it. You can see the difference in clarity. Uh, and then the, the hard plastic, these don't have any PVC. These are ar archival safe. Those are good for long-term storage. Usually the only reason to use short-term storage is because you want to use it for display. So I know lots of dealers that'll use these because what happens is if you move the plastic, the hard plastic archival ones around a lot, in and out of holders, in and out of holders, they actually get scuffed up pretty easy because of their harder plastic, whereas the soft plastic won't. So if you're just looking for short term, if you're a vest pocket dealer and you want to set up at a show or something like that, you can consider using the softer plastic. All of these are real simple devices. They run like five and five cents, seven cents, something like that uh, per, per unit. And so this is good if you're collecting raw coins and you're collecting all different types of coins. Uh, these guys will fit pretty much anything from your half dime all the way up to your, your silver dollars, your bigger coins. Uh, silver eagles fit in these, so up to 40 millimeters. Uh, so you can do all kinds of different coins in these holders. Next, if you have those, if you're just doing this for uh, maybe some long-term storage, you're probably going to consider putting them into something like a double row box. So double row boxes are pretty convenient if you get a lot of something. So if you get into the minutia of collecting certain types of overdates or die varieties, or you just have something with a lot of one type, these are really good for long-term storage. You can pick these up depending on where you're at in the country, probably for seven to $10 range. Uh, these are really good. Sometimes you'll see dealers at shows use these as just inventory boxes and you'll see other dealers kind of going through them. Uh, and a lot of dealers can keep things in order until the dealer who doesn't know how to keep things in order comes through, takes them out a little bit of time and puts them back in the wrong order. Uh, you know who you are, all right? I'm not pointing any fingers, but you know who you are. So this is good for long-term storage. You'll see this is full of the two by twos with the staples. Not my preference. It's, I don't like staples. Uh, they just tend to pop up and get involved when catching on to catching on to other holders and coins. That's how coins get scratches. I really prefer the soft plastic because of that. The advantage to this, of course, is you can write directly on here. Uh, if you use the soft plastic, the plastic flips, if you want to write on them, you either need to use a permanent marker or you need to put a label on the other side of the holder, which makes you not able to see the other side of the coin, generally speaking. So those are all things for you to consider when you're looking at, at storing the coins. Now, if you're more in an organized set, you're probably going to go with uh, an album like one of these. These are really good because they already tell you what coins you need, what coins you're missing. The basic Harris folders, uh, these are what a lot of you grew up with, with the uh, Whitman version of this. And what you can do is you can collect one of each. These albums are usually about four bucks. You can buy them in a lot of different coin stores. Some guys don't carry any supplies anymore because it's just not their thing. It's too, you know, they just don't have a lot of demand for it. Um, but this is a great way to get kids involved. Like start with the stuff that they can find just in pocket change. Let them go through pocket change. Start collecting that way. Get some really, really interested in coins if you do it that way. Next up, the Dance Go albums. These are usually uh, going to be $25 to $35, somewhere in there. Uh, these are nice for storage because they have sliding windows and you can open the window and then close it. You put the coin in there. And what's nice 
is then both sides of the coin can be viewed when you flip it around. So this is really nice way to keep sets if you're putting together raw sets of coins. Um, it's fun. I mean, this is what a lot of guys start with with your albums. And uh, it, it's really satisfying to fill up a coin album and get it complete. So we're going to step momentarily back into a different type of album. Once you have your coins in one of these holders, if you're not doing a set that's specific, or if you want to make your own style of set, any one of those holders will fit into one of these plastic pages. And these plastic pages then fit into any three ring binder. So th these are usually about 75 cents. And then these binders here, uh, you know, we don't carry them, but you can pick them up anywhere at like Walmart or Target, uh, school supply or business office section. Um, the size that you want will vary depending on the person's just kind of individual beliefs and how thick they should be. Um, and you can see this is really, you can, you can organize this really well if you choose to. This happens to have currency in it instead of coins. Uh, I will say that I prefer thinner ones versus thicker because once you get a ton of these pages with coins in them, they become, not only does this become heavy, but also the pages tend to like pull down against each other and it, it becomes a lot more cumbersome. So I tend to tell people to get the, the inch and a half or less size instead of the big three inch binders that some guys get. All right, let's move on to certified coins. So depending on what your setup is at home with certified coins, you may consider doing something of a display. In other words, if you have a place to put coins, you can get something like a display rack like this. Of course, this is the type of thing you'll see lots of coin shops have. Of course, this, these get beat up pretty good at a coin shop. We got to replace them at least like once a year. But this way, you know, you can display things fairly well. Um, they'll fit into a safe and then you can pull them out and show your friends if that's what you're into doing. I know a lot of people don't do it that way. That's just an option. Most people who buy slabs will usually want a PCGS or an NGC slab box. And so a slab box is, of course, a box that'll fit slabs. Fancy name, right? Ingenious. So you've heard of maybe like the Burger Wars or the Cola Soda Wars or this. There's a, there is a holder war and a box war between NGC and PCGS over the years. And it's really fascinating to follow. For years and years, NGC holders... Uh, boxes would hold PCGS coins, but PCGS would not hold NGC coins. And I thought that's like the snobbiest thing ever, right? So, but what's funny is recently PCGS re-engineered their holders so that they no longer fit into the NGC holders. Now they have new boxes and the NGC holders kind of fit. But still, this is the funny part, like PCGS is still just, it doesn't, doesn't quite close all the way when you, put, when you put the NGC coins in there. So I was really fascinated because I thought PCGS, man, you know, you're really playing the game now. You're going to want to hold NGC holders. No, PCGS is too good for NGC. Your holders still don't really fit in there. Not exactly. So one of the things that's fascinating is if you collect both NGC and PCGS holders, you may have to have boxes until NGC re-engineers their box to fit PCGS holders or PCGS decides to make a holder that fits NGC box, uh, NGC holders. You know, you're going to have to have both kinds of boxes if you collect both types of coins, which is just a pain in the butt. Uh, one of the other things that I want to point out is what PCGS has done is they re-engineered their box. It is now quite a bit shorter and these both hold 20 coins. These hold the same amount of coins. I'm waiting for PCGS to make their box a little longer and come out with like a 25 coin holder, uh, 25 coin box. I think that would really be, really be a good idea on their end. So this is mostly going to be for organization and for uh, keeping track of your coins and for storage, not really for display. Now it's hard to find anything for display. I did recently come across these in a collection that I bought, and these I found online. You can find them on eBay for um, anywhere from 20 bucks to 50 bucks. Depends on if the shipping is free or not. 
So, you know, generally speaking, they're not a cheap buy, but it's the same concept as the albums, but for slabs. So the way it works is you have these pages. Once again, this is a little cumbersome. You know, it's got the big U-ring centerpiece in it. And the way the pages work is the pages don't open unless you get the uh, U-ring open here. And then you can slide the page out and the page, because the U-ring goes through both sides of this, the page will open. And then, of course, this will fit either NGC or PCGS coin holders, slabs. So now what you have is you have both storage and you have uh, display. So you can store them. Um, and if you want to flip through them and organize them in an order, and they don't have to be stuck in the same order, you can reorganize them however you want. The only downside to me to this is this whole setup is very bulky. You know, it takes up a lot of space. Um, and once again, though, it's just kind of up to you however you want to store stuff, how you want to hold it and display it. Um, so anyway, I hope that helps you understand a few of the different options out there. I know for some of you, you've, this is old hat, but for a lot of you, you're kind of new to the marketplace. There are a lot of different things to consider, um, whether you want to have the holders for storage or for display, uh, it's going to be a different answer for you. If you collect raw coins versus slab coins, uh, whether you're doing sets or random collecting of things you like, and, uh, whether you're doing long-term storage or short-term storage. All of these will factor into which uh, type of display you choose to use. So anyways, leave your comments down below if there's certain types of holders that you're looking for, things that you thought that I missed, other things you want to mention. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can uh, subscribe by clicking on the button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.